Hi, um, mine's a little more logistical, I guess, and it can apply to Transformers specifically, but also because of the um, kind of scattered geography of Cybertron, but also prose writing in general. I was wondering if you guys really thought about this. Um, when you're writing characters, before you get the art, before you know what the places are gonna look like, how do you block the characters in your mind in the scene and the layout of their environment? How do you keep that straight? <laughs> well, with me, I mean, sometimes I just draw little pictures, but I, you know, some, some writers I know actually have the figures on their desk. Like, I don't know if any of you guys know who Paul Dini is, but Paul Dini has written for everything in animation, right? <laughs> and I'll go into his, over to his place and he'll have like 16, you know, whatever show he's working on, you know, if it's G.I. Joe, there are like 16 G.I. Joes on his desk. If it's Batman, the action, and this guy created Harley Quinn. I mean, he's done a lot of great work, right? Um, and, but I mean, he actually does it almost like it's a puppet show on his desk. You know, I, I will draw, you know, diagrams and stuff like that of, of what I think it works or, you know, or just, you just kind of have it in your head. And, and then, then when you actually have to fill it out, you, you do have to think about, okay, where are they and what's the room look like? And, you know, and sometimes you're vague about it. There's a guy named Larry Houston who just like lived inside my brain. And <laughs> when he storyboarded my stuff, he was like exactly what I saw, but 10 times better. You know, it, it just depends on what medium you're working in. That, yeah, yeah and, and in the medium of comics, that's an interesting question because it speaks to the, to the relationship you've got with your with your artist, really. Because, um, I mean, broadly speaking, there's there's two ways of writing comic scripts. There's the so-called Marvel method mm -hmm. versus the sort of full script method. Uh, the latter is is far more detailed in in in, in mm -hmm. that the writer is going to sort of almost set it out like a like a, a storyboard in prose. So you you know you're you're you're, you're writing you know, panel for panel. You're describing what happens, um, and you're, you know, for the, for the for the benefit of the artist to sort of block out the scene as you see it. Um, and the Marvel method is is um, takes a different approach. Um, you know, you're you're sort of um, the, the story still needs to be there, but there's a little bit more flexibility in the early stages, and and indeed the dialogue doesn't get added till the sort of near the end of the process. Mm -hmm. um, but in the full script method, which is which is what I prefer, because I'm a control freak. Um, <laughs> You, you do have to um, pay attention absolutely to to the to the setting and, and the the dynamics of the scene and, and if you this isn't a plug for the fact that scripts are available from my table but if you were to buy a script <laughs> no, you'd see that there's a lot of um, a lot of um, effort spent describing um, the, the, the dynamics the spatial dynamics of each scene and, and who is positioned where and who's standing where and particularly in in in, in the Lost Light, where there's a lot of characters. Um, and the only other thing I'd say is that when we, when we started More Than Meets the Eye, um, Alex Milne, who was the principal artist, um, did sort of sets. He drew key locations like Swerves and like Rung's office and things. So mm -hmm. we, we had that to look to. Okay, cool. Well, thank you. <laughs>